Okay, for today, I thought we'd return to our idea of the region of attack. This time, instead of fixing a particular theta and then swinging around in an azimuthal direction, uh, our, our fixed angle cannon, and seeing what the total area or total volume of space that we could reach is, let's try fixing the launch speed of our projectile, but allowing many different angles of launch, anything from zero all the way over to 180 degrees. And when we do this, we'll end up with many, many different trajectories. I want to know something about the envelope. In other words, what is this shape that describes all the possible max points um, uh, for distance away from our launch point? What shape is it? I also might want to know what is the area of that shape and we'll need to remember from last time, or time before that, what the general form of the projectile's trajectory is. Remember that theta here is the launch angle, v naught is the launch speed, we have our usual g, and this y is just telling us the height of the projectile as a function of position. Okay, so let's take a look at this. To determine this, this uh, envelope, I'm going to actually use um, a little bit of a polynomial information, thinking about discriminants of a certain quadratic. Let's rewrite this entirely in terms of tangent theta. Of course, secant squared can be rewritten as a tangent squared plus one, and kind of massage that into a quadratic equation for tan theta. So here is our trajectory rewritten in terms of only tangent thetas. I'm also going to introduce a little bit of additional notation. Notice that this point right here, which is the very farthest range that our projectile can possibly get, is known. I'll call that R star, something like that, indicating the maximum range at a given launch speed. We've already kind of worked out what that maximum range is. It occurs when theta is a 45 degree launch angle, and its value is v naught squared over g. I'm going to rewrite this a little bit in terms of this r star, just to make the notation a little bit cleaner. Now let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of a quadratic formula involving tan theta. Okay, let's go ahead and multiply this whole thing by 2r star and get rid of this negative sign just to make things look a little bit prettier. And now we can see that we have a quadratic equation in terms of theta or tan theta. And I know that this quadratic equation will only have real solutions. It'll only have real number roots when the discriminant is non-negative. And that's going to put a bound on what the allowed values of x, y, and r star are. Because we know that any possible theta between 0 and 180 should give us a trajectory here. The x and the y's are going to give us some constraints on the actual shape of that trajectory or the envelope of that tra those trajectories. So really, I'm just saying, what are the possible real number solutions to this for tan theta? Instead of actually going and looking at the full quadratic formula, we can just look at the discriminant of this and solve for when that discriminant is greater than or equal to zero. In our particular case, here's our b term, which involves an x and an r star. Our a term has an x squared, and our c term is everything here that doesn't depend on tan theta. So substituting everything in gives us this condition. Now, we know that x squared itself is going to be greater than or equal to zero because 
x is a real number. The only place of interest where it might equal zero is when x itself equals zero. That's fine too. It's a slightly degenerate uh, parabola, just vertically upwards. But it's okay for me to divide out the x squareds. And then notice that I have a 4 in each of these terms that I can also divide out. This inequality will give us some constraint on x and y that is allowed to exist in order for there to be a real value launch angle that gives us that trajectory. So let's bring this up to the top of the next board. I'll rewrite it in terms of y, and we'll see what we get in terms of a, an envelope. OK, so here we are. I went ahead and rearranged things a little bit. This is pretty easy to see where the roots are. So x is equal to positive r star or negative r star gives me 0 for y. That makes sense. My dotted red envelope there will have intercepts at plus or minus r star. We can also see that when we solve that inequality, we ended up with a y less than or equal to all of this. So the allowed values of y for all my projectiles have to be below this particular parabola. So the envelope is a parabola. It's another parabola. And we can figure out uh, what the maximum of this parabola is. For example, setting x equal to 0, I see that this maximal point is actually half of this maximal range. So that's kind of interesting. And we now have the equation of the envelope for all possible trajectories that are launched with a given value of v naught. Don't forget that v naught feeds into what this r star is. OK. <coughs> now we're ready to tackle the second question here. What is the area of this particular region of um, possible trajectories? So I'll go ahead and use calculus here. It's not that bad. We want to find the area from negative r star to positive r star of this particular value. So the integration will be pretty straightforward. Notice also that we can make a real quick change of variables here because I see this dimensionless quantity x over r star and also the r stars show up in the bounds of my integral. So let's make a u substitution, say here, of x over r star. Doing that, I'll change these bounds. We'll pick up another r star from the dx. And let's go ahead and use the fact that since the integrand is an even function of x, I can just go from 0 to r star and double it. When x is equal to 0, of course, u will also be equal to 0. When x is equal to r star, u will be equal to 1. That's convenient. Don't forget that the dx is going to pick up an additional r star. Pulling all the constants to the front and noticing that the 2 and the 2 here cancel, we can do our antiderivative. OK, we're pretty much out of room here. Let's bring this to the top. We'll finish off the, the antiderivative. OK, so I did the antiderivative of the constant 1 term and then the minus u squared term, power rule. Plugging in the 0 to either of those will, of course, give 0. Plugging in the top value for the fundamental theorem of calculus, I'll get 1 minus 1 third, which gives me 2 thirds. This has the right dimensions. It's a distance squared, which will indeed give me an area. But let's go ahead and just use our last result, which is that r star itself is v naught squared over g, to rewrite this in terms of the given parameters. And there is the area of this entire envelope of trajectories at any given launch angle with a fixed v naught. QED.